Jackknife Finnegan Out the Box, a podcast that brings you news about entertainment, wrestling, video games, anything that I think you should be aware of. Also, wild and crazy news as well. AEW streaming service could be coming soon. AEW filed a trademark for AEW+. I think that's a very smart move. I'm very happy to see this because I'm tired of paying $50 a month for AEW pay-per-views. That is a lot of money. That was back in the 90s. This is the new era, streaming, where you pay a little bit a month and you get the back catalog, you get the shows, you get the pay-per-view. I think this would make AEW more accessible and more economically viable for people to see the pay-per-views, to see the catalog, to see the shows at a small premium price every month. Let me know what you guys think. So AEW Plus, that would be the name because that's the trademark that they filed for. Now, one thing that is cool about the AEW streaming service that they are going to probably be rolling out here very soon You're going to get the Ring of Honor content library, AEW content library. And I'm sure whatever Tony Khan has bought up, you will get that library as well. One thing that is cool about streaming service is right now the AEW, they got hit by the network. A whole bunch of rules of what they could say, what they can do no blood blood um so on and so forth but when you own your own streaming service you pretty much can do whatever you want you can cuss you can have blood you can no rules pretty much and i think that'd be a smart move especially for a company like aew because they are being deemed the ecw of today so i think the streaming network would be a very smart move versus being on an old network that's on television because you got a lot of rules you got to follow where you're on a streaming service you kind of get a little bit more freedom right here they are kind of touching on what i started out saying aw launching a streaming service would indicate confidence that their potential subscriber count would yield more revenue then their pay-per-view buys. AEW pay-per-view is costing $50 and regularly doing around 150,000 buys at five times per year, which equates to roughly $37.5 million for an AEW streaming network to match that revenue. It would need just over 312,000 subscribers paying $10 a month. Now, I'm pretty sure AEW can get well over 312,000 subscribers at $10 a month. You got an entire world out there, $10 a month. It's not that bad. Plus, you're getting the back catalog. You're getting the shows. You're getting the pay-per-view. That's a pretty solid deal, in my opinion. I am definitely looking forward to this. I can't wait till this rolls out. And I'm definitely going to be getting it. Let me know in the comments. Are you going to get AEW Plus? Yes or no? Moving on to the infamous Cardi B. Vegas is hot. Pour some water on me. So, guys, I've been seeing the Cardi B, but I have not seen this part of the story until today, which this might change your mind on the whole situation because it changed my mind entirely. So if you're not in the loop, Cardi B was in Vegas. She was doing a show. She was getting ready to sing. Someone in the crowd threw ice and water on her. She got mad. She took the microphone and she chucked it at the person that threw the water on her. And you would think, wow, that is pretty wild. That is goofy. What all happened? So check this out. This is the stuff that you're not seeing on TikTok. This is the stuff you're not seeing on social media which blows my mind. This is what inspired that event to even happen. Check this out. Throw me some water because I'm hot. She's in Vegas. Throw me some water because I'm hot. Now you're thinking, okay, well, she wants a bottle of water. That's what she's obviously saying. Now watch this. Splash her down. Okay, people are throwing water right now. Everything is totally fine. She's enjoying it. Watch this. Okay, look at it. Bending over, letting people throw water on her. So she is already telling the audience, it's okay to throw water on me. It's all right. It's okay. She even encourages you to throw it in her 
The Gene. Yeah, bitch. Sexy lady, baby, who you say? Water being thrown, not nothing happening. Everything is fine. Everything is cool. So she proceeds to do this while in her mission before she starts singing, and everything is cool. Everything is fine. Now she's gonna start singing. Now watch this. Right there, some she's getting ready to sing. How is the music being played? and the song being played, and the rapping being played, with the microphone not even by her face, are you literally going to a Cardi B concert, paying to listen to an iPad? I mean, seriously, what what is going on here? So look at, look at that. Water gets thrown on her, and she takes the microphone and just chucks it at the lady. Music is still playing in the background. She doesn't have a microphone. There's no singing. What's going on right here? The DJ should have cut the music to make it look like it was a little bit more real than what it is. But everybody in the crowd, they don't even care about the music. They want to know what's going on with the microphone incident. What do you guys think in the comments? I mean, she asked for water to get thrown on her. Water is being thrown on her. Everything is totally fine. Then all of a sudden, someone throws water and she loses it and chucks the microphone. I could have definitely seen a self-defense prior to seeing that other footage because when someone throws something at you, you could think you're at imminent threat. You could think, oh my God, what's in that? Is that water? Is that something else? And I could definitely see the self-defense being used here, but given the fact that I seen this, self-defense and everything is thrown out the window, this lady that got the microphone thrown at her is gonna get a fat ass check. She's gonna be living large. So, you know what? That was really dumb coming from Cardi B, especially when I seen this. Very stupid. Let me know what you guys think. Moving on to I Show Speed, probably one of the fastest growing YouTubers, most successful dudes on the platform. Any platform this man touches is instant gold. This guy is on fire, bro. And I'm not gonna lie, it really hurts me and it really bothers me that this man is only 18 years old. I thought he was older, but he's only 18 years old. And he is going through a whirlwind of hell right now and it sucks it really does and what blows my mind is they're calling it cluster headaches now why that blows my mind is when I was younger I got diagnosed that I got cluster headaches what was told to me was when you get a headache another headache builds another headache builds another headache builds and just headaches just keep coming on top of headaches that's what they called cluster headaches back in my day and I was diagnosed of having that but then I see my man, I show speed. I've never had that type of symptom where it swells up your entire face and your entire eye. It's making me nervous, like what's gonna happen? I mean, this guy, he's in Tokyo. He went to the hospital. They released him, everything was all right. But now he is back in the hospital and I'm not sure what's going on with them. I've been trying to pay attention to see what's going on. Now, this is a painful video to watch. This is when he first went to the hospital, and he's pretty much telling you the symptoms of what's going on. He says he's got a really bad, sharp pain and hurting right here by his eye. It's hurting in the back of his head, on this side of his head. And he doesn't look good at all, and he's freaking out, rightfully so. So he goes to the hospital, they release him, and this is his most recent video where he's talking about going back into the hospital. He's numb in the back of his head. He's numb in the front of his face. His parents might fly out to Tokyo, which they should, obviously, because this is not good. You don't want your kid to go through this. Any parent would want to be there, especially when this type of stuff is going on, because really you don't know what's going on. So he had an MRI. We don't know what happened with the MRI. We're, we should find out soon. But I've been watching this story very closely because he's an 18 year old dude. You would never want to wish that on anybody, especially if you're a parent, you would never want to watch your kid go through something like this, especially being far away from home. He lives in Ohio. He's in Tokyo, Japan. That is scary and that sucks. And honestly, I hope nothing but the best for my man, I show speed. 
because as a parent, I care. Breaking news, Paul Rubens dies at 70 years old. Now, recently, a lot of people have been dying at young ages. This blows my mind. I don't know what's going on, but he had a private bout of cancer, and that sucks. I didn't know about that. I'm sure a lot, not a lot of other people knew about that. But for those that don't know Paul Rubens, he was Pee Wee Herman. Now, this guy might have been your childhood. I don't know how old you are, or he might not have been your childhood. You either got two feelings about Pee Wee Herman. He was your childhood, he was, I know you are, but what am I? And he was crazy, he was wild, he had his own TV show, or you might remember Pee Wee Herman as the pervert. He went to an adult movie theater and got in trouble because he was playing a little game called Stroke the Snake. Now, I'm sitting here and I'm trying to make sense of this. You're at an adult movie theater watching an adult show. Whoa, I mean, you're engaging in an adult activity. Apparently, that was not accepted, and he got in trouble, and that's when his career pretty much tanked. He tried resurrecting his career in a couple, you know, other movies since that incident. Never really took off the ground, but he kept afloat. But I'm sad to read that the man, the myth, the pervert is dead at the age of 70. That sucks, bro. I mean, that's Pee Wee Herman. I mean, everybody knows Pee Wee Herman. If you don't, if you don't know Pee Wee Herman, you need to go back, watch a couple of his shows, and just check him out and appreciate Pee Wee Herman for the person and the character that he was, not the guy that was in a movie theater playing a game called Stroke the Snake. I mean, in all honesty, everybody has stroked the snake a couple times in their life. We don't need to shun this man for it, but uh, it does suck that we are losing an icon today. That does suck. So rest in peace, Pee Wee Herman, Paul Rubens, you'll be greatly missed. All right, now getting off the sad news, let's get into some funny news because you don't want everything to be sad. What is going on in Massachusetts? What is happening? I need to know about the school system in Massachusetts. So apparently there is a place by the school where it tells you to slow down. The only problem is school is spelled S-C-H-O-O-L, but this guy spelled it S-H-C-O-O-L, school. So guys, when you're by the school, slow down if you get pulled over by not slowing down in this school zone all you gotta do is go to court and say i was trying to read the damn sign and obviously they spelled it wrong i was more concerned about the spelling than the school kids walking around in the area chances are you might get your fine reduced i'm just saying i'm not an attorney i'm not a lawyer but I would definitely use this to your defense if you get a ticket in this area. Shout out to all the Massachusetts people listening to this right now. All right, so guys, in Beijing, a zoo in eastern China is denying suggestions that some of its bears might be people in costumes after photos of the animals standing like humans circulated online. So the sun bears from Malaysia are smaller than other bears and look different, but are the real thing. That's what they said at this zoo. Now I was sitting there and I'm thinking, well, what are they talking about? Why would they think their bears are humans in Halloween costumes? What would make people think that? Well, recently in Japan, there was a man who paid $14,000 to look like a Kali. It is the most weirdest thing I've ever seen. It's strange. If you do not know what I'm talking about, Google man looking like a Kali in Japan or man looks like a dog in Japan. It will trip you out. It will make you rethink everything you know in life. And it's just really weird. But guess what? Leave it up to me to find the photos that they are talking about. So right here, this does look like a man in a bear costume. Apparently, this is a real bear in Beijing Zoo right now. The zoo denies its bears are humans in costume. I mean, guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Does this look like a man dressed up as a bear? Because it really does. This looks super sus. I'm not going to lie. 
That looks extremely sus, especially when this is the real bear right here that's just chilling in a jacuzzi in the United States. So you got a bear in the jacuzzi just chilling. You got some grandpa dressed as a bear trying to show everybody, no, we're real bears. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. And this is Jackknife Finnegan out the box. Make sure to like and subscribe and turn your bell notification on so you don't miss any podcast episodes.